we can talk all we want about irony here, but let's just begin with, with sheer numbers. I mean, the real question is, did, did these liberal Democrats, as Chris McDaniel calls them, uh, did these liberal Democrats win that Republican runoff for, for Thad Cochran? Well, Brooke, you know, when, when, when uh, McDaniel said liberal Democrats, what he meant was African Americans. Uh, and we do know from the turnout that African American turnout was astronomical, over 40% uh, in, in a predominantly uh, African American counties. Uh, so that approach by the Cochran campaign to look at this runoff as an opportunity to expand the map with a massive get out the vote effort and to go beyond playing to the base, which has been the mantra in Republican primaries for so long, uh, and instead try to expand the map, that proved successful. He was able to take advantage of the fact that Mississippi doesn't have voter registration and appeal to folks like African Americans mm -hmm. who are not traditionally Republican voters. Uh, but they wanted to stop Chris McDaniel, and they succeeded in doing so. They did. And speaking of expanding the map, I mean, we all know this is no secret the Republican Party is challenged when it comes to, to attracting black voters. So, so what I really want to know, yeah. um, what was this r runoff strictly some kind of odd anomaly? Or, or do you have, I mean, just imagine Thad Cochran's cell phone possibly ringing off the hook now with these Republican strategists saying, hey, how'd you pull that off? <laughs> Look, I mean, the, the Cochran campaign does show an alternate path to victory. It's the alternative of simply doubling down on the base, trying to just, you know, try to get low turnout and appeal to just enough white folks to get across the finish line. It worked. You know, the Republican Party needs to deal with demographic change. Uh, they've had a real problem doing that. Really, Rand Paul is one of the few national Republican leaders who's constantly challenging the party to reach beyond the base, to come up with new coalitions, to reach out to African Americans uh, and Hispanics. The, McDan the, the Cochran campaign is one of the first to do it. Let in, in a primary, which are the degree of difficulty is much higher. So it does show an alternate path for, to victory. It shows a different way to fight in the GOP civil war. Uh, and it could, if someone is, is inspired, uh, inspire some folks in the Republican Party to think beyond the base and try to figure out how to pla practice the politics of addition, not just the politics of division, <laughs> which they've done for basically the past decade. John Avalon, can I, send, I want to ask you something sort of out of a left field here. Uh, on Thad Cochran, when you look at his, okay. uh, when you look at his age, 76. Um, he is on his way to another six years in the Senate. You have New York's Charlie Rangel, Democrat, age 84. You, do you see where, where I'm going here? He appears to have won his primary. You have an 84-year-old and a 76-year-old. Listen, that, that's tons of experience. They're a little farther from some of those voters. Speaking of expanding the map, they want the youth vote. I mean, the, these two maybe are not entirely hip to the Twitters. Do, do you see anything interesting in that? <laughs> I, look, I, I think you, you, it's real tempting to draw a direct line between Cochran and Rangel last night. I don't think there's much of it. Here's where Tip O'Neill gets his revenge. All politics is local. But the one thing I think that did matter in both these races is that, that heritage of public service and the high name ID hmm. uh, that, that made them a safer alternative than their challengers. Uh, and I do think it's important to real recognize that that increased turnout wasn't necessarily pro Thad Cochran. Uh, as much as folks may have liked his record of bringing home the bacon in Mississippi, uh, it was it just as intensely anti-McDaniel, anti-Tea Party, a concern that maybe these folks, like some of the other candidates we've seen, would embarrass uh, the state in the Senate or empower a Democrat to really take out, take them out. So th that really motivates, I think, a lot of the opposition in the Mississippi race. It's not just a love of senior citizens, Brooke. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not, that, not what I was insinuating at all. John Avalon, I liked your word heritage, heritage <laughs> in Congress. We'll go with that one. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my friend.